pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, All members are present. They're Dennis is, oh, I'm sorry, Dennis Fury is out. Um, any announcements? No? Okay. We need to approve the agenda for this evening. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, approval of the minutes for this evening. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, no correspondence. We move to our first public comment session. We ask you to give your name and address so we can follow up with you if you need any additional information. Okay, seeing none, we will move to, to, and having no unfinished business, we'll move to the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mrs. Kloss. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce Keith Kewick, the principal at Ledgeview Elementary, for a cool demonstration by his kids. Hey, welcome, everybody. Two years ago, our s all four elementary schools in Clarence had half-time librarians, and they were split between buildings. Um, but at that point, the school board added two teaching positions, which allowed for each elementary building to have a full-time library media specialist. A duty that was added was enrichment for the library media specialists. So when we're thinking about what we could present tonight, we wanted to share with everybody exactly what we are doing, some of the neat stuff going on at Ledgeview with our library and Miss Mary Jo Brunetto. Um, as far as enrichment goes at our school. So welcome, Ms. Brunetto and fifth graders. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Ms. Brunetto, and I'm a school librarian here at Ledgeview. So in the library, each year level has a period of time scheduled for enrichment program. Each class is 30 minutes long, and we meet weekly. Together, the students and I challenge each other to problem solve, use technology, work together, and apply their classroom knowledge to build upon these skills. In the past, we've done book clubs, use presentation tools to showcase research projects. Um, we've created book trailers into movies and built bridges out of Legos to see what bridge could hold the most weight based on their bridge research. I created a slideshow to show you just some of the activities we have done this year. Tonight, I want to highlight some of my fifth grade students who have joined my coding club. These students use the Google program Yes First that provides them with video tutorials on how to create their very own video game. Then they use what they have learned from the videos to create their very own game on the coding website Scratch. These students are going to talk to you about their game and how they created it. Hello, my name is Louis Lynn Cuso, and I would like to show you my quest game. The object of the game is to find the hidden treasure hidden by the goblins. It will be in one of the three areas, either the house, the forest, or the cave. To find the gem, you will use your panda. To move your panda, you will use the four arrow keys up, down, left, and right. To walk into a room, tap any part of the room. The gem's not in here, so use the door to exit. The gem's not in here either. So the gem is towards the bottom of the screen. When I click the gem, it says, yay, you win. It changes color, and it'll get bigger 
and it'll get bigger or smaller. Uh, that was one of the add-ons that I added. The code for that add-on is right here. A set size to pick random means that every time the character touches the gem, it'll pick a random position or size for the gem to move. I didn't create all of this code. I only created the part that the panda said, the uh, music loop, and these two if-then loops. To make my narrative or the story behind it, I used this code and I went into costumes, I typed the backstory, and I put these little uh, images in. This was the code for my house, the cave, and the forest. That is my gem game. Thank you. Hi, my name is Deanna Morganti, and I created the Butterfly Cave Game. To play this game, you press the green flag in the top right corner. And then you want to drag your mouse around so that it will try to avoid the, your enemies, the fish. <laughs> if you accidentally hit the fish, your time pops up. I got 6.22 on that one, so I'm going to try to beat my score by staying on the board the longest. I got 14.40 this time. Yay, I beat my score! <laughs> to, stop, to stop the game, you want to press the red stop sign in the corner. I chose my background by choosing a background from the scratch library. This is my fish pose, and this is my butterfly. I put the timer code into the fish code because when you hit the fish, you, the time comes up from the fish. To choose my sprite, I went down to new sprite and I clicked on it. And then there is a bunch of sprites that you could pick from. That was my butterfly cage game. Thank you. for the uh, unicorn is right here and the code I created for the butterfly is right here and this is the code for the app. I got I got to change the color of the of the sprite by going by picking the sprite I want to use and just choosing a color. I also got the sound by scrolling through the scratch library.
Thank you very much. We'll pause for a second in case anyone wants to leave. Thank you very much. Do you have any other? Okay, thank you very much. Finance. Uh, there's not much tonight. I did want to mention that um, as interest rates are soaring nearly 1%, we will now be able to uh, take funds that were just previously left in money market accounts and, and ladder out some investments um, uh, like we typically would. Uh, the the two bill Treasury bills and CDs, um, we're getting 90-day rates that look pretty good. Um, they're still under 1%, but... Um, they're five times what they are right now. Okay. Uh, motion to approve F1. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Personnel. Thank you. Uh, we have an appointment of a regular substitute teacher, the extension of a mentor for the remainder of the school year, an appointment of academic intervention services instructors. I'm not sure whether or not we can have a pill. We have the Sports extracurriculars uh, to review this season, and we will have the uh, represent a full slate for the February meeting for approval. Presentation compensation, the various programs, and positions and evolution of the substitute teacher. Okay, anyone have any questions on P1 through P3? Okay, a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Okay, uh, non-instructional. We have one resignation for the purpose of retirement and uh, the appointment of uh, the bus driver and the nurse. Okay, again, any questions? Okay, a motion to approve P4 and P5. So moved. Second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, next, special needs and student activities. Um, 20 committee on special education meetings this month mostly for just program changes seven preschool meetings this month after this month it'll start to ramp up for the annual reviews for next year so all of those changes are in front of the board okay any questions on special ed at recommendations if not motion to approve so moved. Second. second okay all those in favor Okay, and the preschool as well? Yes. Okay, approval for the preschool? So moved. Second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Okay. Board development and policy. If I can just real quickly, that'll kind of go along with what the kids demonstrated. <laughs> our technology committee meeting for the district is tomorrow afternoon. We did a survey for our staff based on the kinds of technology that they would like us to purchase with the Smart Schools funding. We have about $500,000 to expend this year in our Smart Schools plan. Rick did a great job. We already were reimbursed for the first purchase. Took about a couple months, Rick? Uh, even less. Even less. So our committee tomorrow night will make some of the decisions about the cool stuff we're going to get for the kids. Uh, because that was an awesome demonstration by these fourth and fifth graders. Um, as far as board development, we have a uh, academic or uh, an athletic competition, varsity cheerleaders to Louisville, Kentucky. Um, according to Greg Kazubski, our athletic director, this is more of a regional competition, even though it's called national cheerleading competition. So um, the kids will pay their own way for this particular competition. The field trip request form had a couple of errors in it, so it was redone. It was put in front of your places tonight. Nothing serious, just making sure it was 100% accurate. Um, just one quick thing. There is a contingency here. Hamburg is another school district that would be sending kids. They're sharing the bus and the transportation. 
if for some reason Hamburg bails out, our kids will probably bail out as well. But um, the approval process, this would be about a month, month and a quarter before the trip is scheduled. Okay. Anyone have any questions on the field trip request? Okay, motion to approve. So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right, we move to the next public comment session. Again, I ask that you leave your name or give us your name and address in case we need to get back in touch with you if you have any questions. No? Okay. Uh, and before you, uh, the list of our upcoming meetings. We have our budget re uh, retreat January 28th. Be before we begin the process of the two meetings a month, one for general business and the second one uh, primarily devoted to our uh, budget study. First session is January 30th um, pr to prepare the budget for the school year 2017-18. Is there any unfinished business or anything anybody needed to bring up before we conclude to move to executive session for the purpose of discussing matters leading to the potential discipline of a particular employee? That's very good news. Okay. And uh, need a motion to adjourn? Nope. Second? Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Everyone, thank you for coming and have a good evening.